Hi, Mike. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you doing? Mike, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. My name is Mike Miglio. I'm uh, an attorney in the US. I, I focus uh, specifically on cryptocurrency matters. In 2017, I founded a cryptocurrency law firm called Wolf Miglio. And uh, for the past four years, that's what I've been doing as the managing partner of that firm. Uh, just you know, helping crypto clientele kind of navigate regulatory waters here in the US and abroad. Um, and in that time, we, we've serviced a lot of important clientele some, some names people have heard of, like uh, like Noya and Acropolis and uh, Qtum and, and Gate.io, and, and then so many others that, that, that people haven't heard of because actually most startups end up failing, right? So um, I've been blessed to kind of vicariously live through the experience of, of dozens of projects before this one that I've started um, as their legal counsel and, 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 and get to see what uh, trials and tribulations they've had to overcome, which has really helped out in the grand scheme of things. Uh, before that, even I, I bought my first Bitcoin back in, in 2016. So just right before the uh, 2017 boom, I guess. I mean, not right before, but a year before. Um, and now we're here today, uh, in 2021. Uh, about like uh, six months ago, I started the Fridge Mutual with my two founders, uh, Lily Fung and Joshua Weiser. And over the last six months, the idea, you know, slowly got put together and developed and came to life. And uh, fast forward to, to January, um, we're launching. We're launching in like three days uh, in TGE, not the project. The project will launch in March, but then TGE is happening in, in January. So really excited. That's where we're at. Okay, so first, Mike, I want to say that I'm really jealous because you're one of these lucky guys who bought Bitcoin at the very beginning. And <laughs> no, it, wasn't, it wasn't that cheap. I, I, I missed the boat for the really cheap Bitcoins. <laughs> Yes, and I really like the way you entered the crypto industry by doing something super niche. Basically, uh, you were a lawyer for crypto. And after you decided to leverage your experience to start your own uh, blockchain project. And so can you tell us more about your insurance project? Yeah, absolutely. So Bridge Mutual is a um, decentralized, down-managed, uh, peer-to-peer or, or peer-to-business discretionary uh, insurance platform or coverage platform, I probably should say. It's not It's not like an insurance company. It's a platform that allows people to, to use it, anyone to use it without um, having to give away their identity or anything else. Um, and they can provide coverage to assets that they think are safe and other users can buy policies um, to basically secure themselves from potential risks on assets that they think are not safe. Um, and that's, that's in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of all it is in a high level. It's, it's a, a series of pools and people can interact with those pools on predetermined uh, rules and prices. So can you walk us through how it would work? Um, let's say if I'm, I'm seeking some protection, how I would use it? Uh, maybe you, you guys have a, a, some UI already, or maybe we can see something. Yeah, we, we do have a UI. Um, yeah. If I if I share the screen, will it will it like transfer over to be able to see it on YouTube and everything else? Yeah, 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 it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, share this. So this is the the buy policy screen. You can see uh, at the top here we have contracts, stable coins, custodians, and exchanges. Uh, and this is just a, the mock up. This is not the the, the real coded UI. Which this is a like a presentation piece. So um, yeah, it's very simple. If you wanted to buy insurance uh, or coverage. On balancer, you would select the balancer pool. You would choose the duration. You would choose the amount of funds you want to be covered for. You would pay that and die. Uh, you allow it. You approve, and you're you're good to go. It's really simple. Um, you know, we've got four products in the beginning. Each of them have um, different durations for the voting period. But yeah, this is this is this is one sneak peek of the platform. The whole thing is. Is pretty much done, but there's there's some information on the pages that I, I have to keep secret. So we'll we'll halt the sharing from there. But uh, yeah, um, it's really simple to do it. Very very quick and easy to buy. I love it. The UI is really simple and clean, and we understand right away what's going on. So just to be clear, when you mean insurance, so it's insurance against the risk of smart contract hack, right? Yeah, so it, it depends on the product we're talking about. But for exchanges and service providers like custodians and for smart contracts, what we're protecting against is exploits and rug pulls and hacks, right? So exchanges can get hacked. KuCoin, it just happened to them. 
Um, smart, con smart contracts, obviously, there's rug pulls, there's exploits all the time. Uh, that's what you're protected against. Now, we do have also stablecoin insurance. Stablecoin insurance is a protection against the price, right? Because a stablecoin is supposed to be pegged at a certain value. Um, that's literally the only reason they exist. So if they, if they fail uh, at their purpose, you can get protected. Um, and the way that works is pretty simple. Uh, you buy, as an example, 10,000 uh, USDT coverage. Um, USDT falls in price for whatever reason. Okay, well, if it's, if it's fallen for a duration of seven days or 14 days, uh, you can press the claim button on your contract and get paid out immediately and die, right? Or if die gets, die gets uh, exploited or hacked or the price goes down for any other reason, uh, you make a claim on it and you get paid out in, uh, as an example, USDC. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. And how does it work for the claim process if there was a hack and I bought an insurance, I want to get my money back, uh, what do I need to do? Yeah, so you just, you just go to the website. Um, in, the, in the main dashboard, you're going to see a list that says my policies and you just press claim. And what that does is it opens up a, uh, a text box as well as a, a drag and drop area where you can put in photos and videos. And, and these things will be used as evidence for the voters to um, basically assess as proof of loss. So your job as a claimant is to convince everyone else on the platform who's voting on you that you really did receive a loss, uh, that your address received a loss, right? So you would put in, um, if, if one inch were to get hacked, which they probably won't, uh, you just put, hey, one inch got hacked on this day. Here's the tweet from the team. And then you link the Twitter and it explains everything that happened. And then you link the transaction IDs that show that uh, the one inch liquidity pool got hacked for this much and that you had funds in that liquidity pool because we can see on chain that you put funds in there. So it's, it's all really easy to piece together for smart contracts. Um, when you have that kind of evidence, you're very, very likely to get approved for whatever the claim amount would be. Um, yeah, and then they would just vote on it. It's really simple. You, you would, you would, if you had like a $10,000 policy, you would uh, put in how much you've actually lost up to 10,000 and submit the claim and then it would get voted on. Okay, so who are these voters who say who will uh, approve your claim? Mm -hmm. It's people on the platform. So BMI holders have to stake their BMI on the platform in order to vote. Uh, there is a reputation system kind of over the entire platform and the reputations are tied to the addresses. So when you vote in a positive way, when you vote with the majority, uh, the system assumes that you're being benevolent, you're being honest, and you get rewarded reputation. And as you get rewarded reputation, um, your reputation score grows, and so does the power of your voting. And the, the exact same is true for the opposite. If, you are, uh, if you're voting in the minority, especially in the low minorities, uh, you will lose more and more reputation depending on how severe, how severely against the majority you are. And uh, over time, the system will quiet your voice. So you have less of an impact because we assume that you're being a malicious actor. Now there, there is uh, incentive systems comprised of rewards and punishments that make, make it so that people are incentivized to vote honestly. Um, in our platform, it is possible to lose BMI and that BMI goes to other people if you're voting heavily in the minority, right? Um, we always assume that these, these large outliers, like uh, 98 to 2, 98 to 2% yes or no, are, are people that are voting um, maliciously, right, or dishonestly. So these people are the ones who are voting on your claim. And, uh, and yeah, and then you can make an appeals process, right? Or you can make an appeal. Uh, actually, either side can make an appeal, depending on what's going on. And uh, the appeals phase is handled specifically by people who are considered to be... Um, trusted voters. And a trusted voter is somebody that has a certain ratio of uh, voting in the majority and also a reputation score that meets the, th the threshold required. Um, these, these, uh, these requirements are dynamic. They'll change over time based on the system, but they're always going to be people that have a really strong track record. So we trust these people to be honest. And these people are actually even more incentivized to vote uh, properly. The reward for them is much bigger. So yeah, that's that's kind of a that's a high overview, a little bit more complex in practice, but that's basically how it works. I think it's pretty clear. It's pretty simple, and I like how it's uh, flexible. 
Uh, so like we submit proof uh, off chain, but this is still uh, voted on chain. So I think uh, this is a good compromise. Of course, the best would be to have a, a system of Oracle to determine a hack, but I, I guess uh, we're not there yet. Uh, maybe in a few years. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a couple of projects saying that they're going to be doing that. We're trying to do that. Uh, I think in practice, it's very difficult. I think that uh, mm. to, to have like... Um, algorithms or AI assess claims in an accurate way is something that would be uh, literally like a trillion dollar solution. That would be magnificent. That'd be huge. I think most things require uh, the wisdom of the crowd and it's, it's too difficult to assess these types of things um, with just humans. I mean, you can see the transfer of funds and stuff and you can guess how likely it is that that was an attack or a hack, but I, I don't think it gets much more uh, advanced at this time. Right, yeah, just uh, one step at a time. And but this being said, for stablecoin, it does use an on-chain oracle to uh, determine the claim. So at least that part of the process is one hundred percent on-chain, which is great. Yeah, right. And so so far we talk all of the side of people who are seeking insurance, but what about of people who are going to provide insurance? What kind of people uh, would it be? Can, can it be anybody? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, we're incentivizing people with yield and with profit sharing. So basically, let's say we, we're going to have Aave, right? We're going to have everything on our, on our system, actually. It's, it's going to be a permissionless system. So if, uh, if there's a smart contract that's not on our system that you want to buy insurance for, or that you want to provide coverage for, you can just add it. Anyone can add it to the system. The way that works is there's a little button that says add contract, and then you just choose what network it's on, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot. You put in the smart contract ID, then the system will go and scrub the Explorer and propagate all the information it can on that smart contract ID. Once you uh, deposit funds into it, it creates the pool. And those funds are for the coverage, right? It's for coverage, it's a coverage pool. So um, we'll have literally hundreds of pools within the first uh, maybe month of being, being up. And then I, I predict over time, we'll grow into having thousands and thousands of pools for many, many different smart contracts. So. You just find what you want to um, buy insurance for and uh, you stake it. And for the, for the coverage providers, it's, it's all about APY, right? So there's, we're trying to compete very heavily with other platforms where you can just put your money in and forget it. And really the only thing you have to risk is whether or not the price of the native token goes down um, or in some cases in permanent loss or getting uh, rug pulled or hacked. With, uh, with Bridge Mutual, of course, it's, a, it's an insurance platform, right? So your funds can be used to pay out a claim if it's successful. So as the coverage provider, you got to do your research. You have to be diligent in what you're doing. You make sure that you're putting your money in a place that is unlikely to experience hack. Or um, if you're going for those higher APYs, go for the, the riskier uh, smart contracts. And um, you know that's, that's a decision you can make for yourself. But uh, in addition to just getting passive yield, you're also getting uh, profit sharing. So whenever someone purchases insurance, on an asset that you're covering, you get a large majority of the premium. I think we're deciding on um, 70 to 75% of the premium gets split among all of the users. And then a portion of the premium also gets locked to incentivize claims voting. Um, but yeah, it can be, it can be you know, very lucrative to provide insurance because of the premium asset and because of the, uh, the claims voting, yeah. Yeah, man, I love it. This is really going to be a very useful project. I can see myself using it. I think a big part of being successful in trading is being able to hedge your risk. So for example, if you're the DeFi trader and you make some crazy APY, like, like 20, 30%, okay, that's great. But also you're facing this huge risk. So uh, if you can take a, a few percent of that huge APY to cover yourself, now you have a risk-free return, uh, which is way better. So um, yeah, I mean, I could totally myself doing this. Even if you if you do some simple stuff like holding Tether, for example. Recently, there was some uh, controversy over Tether. We were um, about do they really have enough uh, reserve, etc. So if you buy insurance, then you can get this, this peace of mind. So yeah, I think it's gonna be super super useful. Um, Mike, so the project is gonna launch in a couple of months, right? Is there yeah? yeah. yeah? We're scheduled for audit on March 8th. So uh, we expect probably two to two to three weeks after March 8th, we should be able to get the green light from the auditors and, and launch the project. 
Okay, very good. So I'm going to post the link in the description below. So guys, check out this project to ensure your DeFi trading is going to be very useful. And also on the other side, if you want to make money uh, as an insurer, uh, that's also one more option for you. Thank you, Mike. And good luck yeah. for your project. Yeah, thank you so much, Julian. All right. Have a good day. Bye. Ciao.